Engineering and STEM majors are consistently ranked as the most stressful subjects you can study, which might explain why the engineering dropout rate is currently upwards of 50%. So it's clear that many students are not successfully managing the high level of stress that comes from studying an engineering or STEM degree, which is why in this video, I'm gonna go over the nine best ways to decrease and manage your stress while you're in school. Let's go. Stress and engineering school go together like trampolines and injuries. It's a package deal. You cannot have one without the other. So if you can't avoid the stress, it then becomes a matter of minimizing and managing the stress as it comes. And you know, I would argue that your graduation will depend more on how well you manage and minimize stress than it will on how smart you are. A good analogy I like to use for this is to imagine a ship on a transatlantic voyage. And the ship has a small hole in it that is continuously taking on water. The ship is you, the destination is graduation, and the water is stress. As the ship begins its voyage, the water, stress, slowly starts to seep in. So if the ship expects to arrive at its destination, graduation, then it will depend on how well the crew can manage the incoming water. If the crew doesn't manage the incoming water successfully, or if the leak gets too big, then the ship will sink and never arrive at its destination. So as school progresses and your courses become more and more challenging, the potential for stress will continually increase. You must learn to manage it successfully or you're gonna sink like a ship full of water. Which is why I wanted to make this video, to give you the tools and insight that you'll need to manage the stress that's gonna come with an engineering or any other STEM degree. So with that, let's jump into the nine best ways to minimize and manage your stress while you're in school. Number one, prioritize your day and then act on those priorities. So on any given day, you're gonna have a list of things that you'd like to do. And one of the best ways to minimize stress is to organize that list by asking yourself the following question. If I could magically have one item on this list complete, which one would it be? The answer you come up with is almost always the item that has the most stress associated with not completing it. So then it becomes your number one priority for the day. And then once it's complete, you repeat this exercise for the remaining items on your list. So by prioritizing this way, it effectively minimizes your daily stress, right? And it also helps you focus your energy on one thing at a time until it's complete, right? Because it's always better to get a few major things done than it does to make minimal progress toward a whole bunch of stuff. I think this one can be summed up pretty well by a quote from Jeff Bezos. He said, stress does not come from hard work. Stress comes from not taking action toward the things you know you should be doing. Also, just a quick suggestion on this one. If you have an exam coming up, I would for sure make that your number one priority, right? Top of the list by far. And it may seem kind of obvious, but I think a lot of people think that they make their exams a high priority when they really don't, right? So especially if you're studying engineering, make your exams your absolute, no questions asked, number one priority because they hold so much weight toward your grade. And speaking of exams, I made a video about how to prepare for any exam. You can check that one out in the description. Number two, maintain proper perspective. So let me ask you something. Are you particularly disappointed if you don't shoot a hole in one on a par four? Yeah! <laughs> you're gonna die, clown! <laughs> no, you're not, because you have proper perspective in the situation. You understand that shooting a hole in one is not probable in that situation, right? So you don't invest very much emotion into not shooting one. And you know, many students enter engineering school expecting a hole in one, right? They were straight A students in high school, top of the class, so they enter college expecting more of the same, and then promptly lose their minds when they earn their first B+. I've spoken to college advisors about this, and they've told me stories of students that, that literally changed majors because they couldn't mentally handle the stress that came from getting Bs and Cs. Isn't that crazy? And this all could have been avoided if they just had proper perspective. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should expect low grades, right? All I'm saying is you should enter engineering school with a proper expectation of its difficulty, right? So then your motivation, your stress levels, and your ego will all remain intact if and when you face a setback or a grade that's not where you want it to be. Number three, become an optimist. Optimism is the kryptonite of stress, right? It, it literally acts as a shield around you in stressful situations. So let's go over just some of the scientifically proven advantages that optimists enjoy, right? They have less anxiety and depression. They're better at coping with stress. They live longer. 
They get sick less because they have stronger immune systems. They're better problem solvers because they believe a solution exists so they don't give up. They have healthier and more fulfilling relationships and they have higher goal attainment. Who wouldn't want to be an optimist? And I know what you're saying. You can't just become an optimist. Stupid internet man thinks he knows everything. And to that I would say, that's just your pessimism talking and you can become an optimist. It's not easy, but most worthwhile things aren't. Here's how you can get started. So first is to practice gratitude, right? You wanna focus on things that you're thankful for instead of on things that you're lacking, right? So a good way to do this is to keep a gratitude journal and write down a few things that you're grateful for every day. Next is to become an observer of your own thoughts, right? Recognize when you're having negative or pessimistic thoughts and challenge them. And seek solutions and improvement instead of focusing on the problem. And visualize success, right? Take a five, 10 minute break out of every day and visualize yourself having success in whatever you wanna get done. And then last but not least, exercise regularly. So becoming an optimist is a slow process, right? But over time, if you commit to some of these practices, your brain will begin to rewire and reorganize itself into a less stressed and more productive version of itself. And to be honest, it'll probably be one of the most worthwhile things you will ever spend your time doing. And if you're interested more in, in the whole rewiring and remapping of your brain, it's called neuroplasticity. And I actually did a longer video explaining how it works. I'll put a link for that in the description. I think I can sum this one up with a quote from Avatar The Last Airbender. If you look for the light, you will often find it. But if you look for darkness, it will be all you ever see. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you are, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's a small and simple thing, but it really goes a long way toward helping others find my channel. Also, if you're thinking about studying in engineering or any other STEM discipline, be sure to check out my book. It is the comprehensive guide for anybody to get any degree they want. And if you talk to any engineering graduate, they'll tell you that there's a lot more to it than just studying, right? It's time management, mindset, discipline, stress management, and of course, studying performance and exam performance. It's all in here. It's getting a ton of great reviews and helping out thousands of students all over the world. So if you're a new student or you're a current student, and you're just struggling a little bit, I guarantee this book will help you. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for the support and back to the video. Number four, establish a singular direction for yourself. At any given time, you're gonna have a multitude of people, things, obligations, and distractions all pulling at you, right? Friends, family, boyfriends, girlfriends, work, video games, TV, shopping, social media, all wanting your time. So one of the most effective ways to minimize the stress in your life is to, you know, get into that mental navigation system in your head and set a singular direction, right? One path. So it means selecting an outcome or a goal that is the most important thing to you and then allowing that outcome or goal to become basically your purpose in life until it's complete. So it could be just getting some homework done, you know, doing well on an exam or just graduating in general. And then once you have that singular direction established, you can run all your thoughts, decisions and actions through the, you know, singular direction filter, if you will, to kind of determine if that stuff is moving you closer or further away from what you're trying to get done. And so by assessing everything this way, you're gonna be removing a ton of stress, ambiguity, and waste in your life. Number five, learn to say no. You know, being selfish is usually viewed as a negative characteristic. <laughs> it's mine. It's all mine. But while you're attempting an engineering or a STEM degree, being selfish is actually a good thing. So while you're in school, your time and energy are going to be largely spoken for by your studies. So the last thing you wanna be doing is making non-value added commitments, right? Commitments that go against that singular direction like we talked about in number four. So you really need to learn how to say no. Let somebody else help your friend move. Let somebody else take on that extra project at work and let somebody else host your buddy's bachelor party. You need to learn to say no and feel good about it. If your friends, family, and coworkers knew the amount of stress it would cause you to lose the time they were asking for, they would most likely not ask for it in the first place. So do not feel bad about saying no. There are times in your life when it's okay to be selfish, and this is one of them. Number six, live in the present. You'd be surprised how much of your own stress is created by dwelling on something that's already happened or by worrying about something that hasn't happened yet. So the question is, why would you waste your precious time and energy by focusing on something that's already happened 
or on something that hasn't happened. You cannot change the past and worrying about the future isn't going to help you prepare for it. The present is where all things get done and where all progress is made. It's the only place that is under your direct control. So it's where you must mentally and physically exist at all times. I just realized that you don't really have a choice physically. Whatever. Learn from your past and implement what you've learned into your present actions to shape your future. I think this one can be summed up pretty well by a quote from the philosopher Seneca, where he said, we suffer more in our imagination than we do in reality. Number seven, do not sacrifice your sleep. Your ability to successfully manage the stress that comes at you every day is directly proportional to the amount of sleep you had the night before. Without an adequate amount of sleep every night, you will become a less capable version of yourself, which means that your ability to process and handle stressful situations will decrease. If you think of stress as like a rainstorm, you could then think of sleep as that protective roof over your head, right? That protective layer that will give you the energy and mental clarity to deal with your daily stressors. So for most people, that means between seven and eight hours a night, right? You can kind of, you know, stay up late here and there every now and again if you're studying or whatever, but do not make a habit of skimping on your sleep. There are a few things that will burn you more quickly. Number eight, meditation. For thousands of years, monks, religious figures, scholars, and other highly successful people have been using meditation to clear the mind, gain perspective, and relieve stress. And if something's been around for that long, it's probably because it works, right? And you know, I can personally attest for its effectiveness. I consistently experience good stress relief from just short, you know, five to 15 minute meditation and breathing sessions. And you know, the topic of meditation might seem kind of obscure to you at first. You know, a quick search on YouTube or the App Store will yield dozens of meditation for beginners options. When I first started to meditate, I used an app called Headspace. It's really well put together, but you know, there's plenty of other options out there. And in reality, you don't really need anything to meditate. All you need is a chair, a comfortable place um, that you won't be disturbed. And all you need to do is sit, relax, close your eyes, and just focus on your breath, right? Every time you get distracted, you bring your attention back to your breath. Get distracted, bring your attention back to your breath, right? And over time, you will become, you know, 100% present in the moment. It's kind of a, a breath of fresh air for your brain and it's a real good reset. And if you continue doing this, you know, most days, five to 10 minutes, you're gonna notice that you'll be a lot less stressed throughout the day. And number nine, last but not least, exercise. So you know that magic pill that everybody's looking for? You know, the one that can cure disease, increase happiness, burn fat, increase intelligence, decrease stress, and give you energy? I think we both know that that pill doesn't exist and probably never will. But there is something that comes pretty close and it's free. I'm talking about regular exercise. Research continues to show that regular exercise is the single most beneficial activity that we can engage in. So not only does exercise burn calories, but it also relieves stress and anxiety. It increases happiness. It prevents disease. It increases energy. It increases mental performance and it can literally help you live longer. Why would you not take advantage of these benefits, right? If I could only recommend one thing for stress relief, it would be regular exercise. The benefits are just too substantial to ignore. And if you wanna maximize the stress relief, try to select a form of exercise that is both fun and you can do outside. Basketball, soccer, tennis, pickleball, mountain biking, and trail running are all great options. While I was in school, I would play racquetball every weekend with the same group of guys. And I would look forward to it all week because it forced me to forget about school, have fun, and it really reset my stress levels. And if you wanna know more specifically about the mental benefits that come from exercise, I've actually done a longer video about that. You can check that one out in the description. There you have it. Those are the nine most effective ways to decrease and manage the stress that can come from studying a difficult degree. I hope you guys found that helpful. Be sure to check back for more engineering tips, advice, experience, and information. So until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.